Hey all, and welcome back to another review. So a big thanks to SimGoth for reaching out to me and providing this review unit for my honest opinion, first of all. So let's start with the build quality, comfort, and features of this particular IEM. So the EN700's look, like how this looks, is really unique to me, at least based on my limited knowledge of in-air you know, monitors and stuff. It kind of reminds me of the HiFiMan HE1000 in a way, because of this grill design on the side of the shells. I do like how they look, and SimGod did give me the choice of four colors, and I went for the black one. I know it's a bit of a safe option, some of you might say it's a boring option, but they do have a bunch of other really nice colors too. I must say I really like the packaging of this, I do believe that this has a very nice uh, basically setup. You look inside this really nice box, and you'll see that it comes with two sets of air tips, and a very nice kind of like leather. I'm not sure if it's real leather, probably not. But this little case that it comes with, which I haven't personally used, never really needed to use it. But if you want to carry your IMs around in pure luxury, go ahead and do this. They come, with, like I said, they come with two sets of air tips. So you have the small, medium, large, of course, both of them are the same. But what option one gives you, it gives you more emphasis on mid range clarity. Now, if you just look at the air tips themselves, you'll see this is achieved by having bigger air holes compared to the other one, which gives you more bass. So the one with more bass gives you a little bit more, slightly more of a V-shaped sound compared to the one which I prefer, which is the one that gives mid-range uh, clarity and emphasis. So you can basically, you know, do some slight tuning. So the Comfort gets a solid A rating from me because due to the shape of this shell, you can like lie in bed and listen to these. You don't have a problem with like, it doesn't feel like it's too big. It doesn't feel like it's uncomfortable. You can lie down in bed with your head on the pillow and you'll be just fine listening to these because it's kind of flat on the outer side if you can see from here. The plastic wrap around the, the cable where it's meeting the driver itself, meaning the shell itself, is curved. So which pretty much says, yo, you can't put this in your air directly. You got to curl it over and then you can insert it. So it's not a big deal for me. Some people want more customization. And I guess too bad for them. Uh, the cable itself is non-detachable, so for a hundred to hundred and twenty dollar IEM, I believe this is, uh, you get you're getting not you're not getting a detachable cable, so you can keep that in mind if you're looking to get these. But I have to admit the cable is very sturdy. Uh, it's made of metal. It doesn't. It seems very durable. Like I've been pulling at it, like you can see right. I just pull at it. it doesn't make a difference totally fine if I did this with uh, for example zero audio carbo tenore back in the day wouldn't last would not last so this is a durable cable but it would have been still nice to have a detachable version that's all I'm saying so the thing about the cable is it does retain some memory though there's no microphonics to my knowledge uh, but it's kind of annoying to untangle this if it gets out of place because it's weighty metal so it can get the knots can get really really tiny if you just mess around and you don't really care about them so much put them in your pocket they'll come out like this so i know many people can wear expensive iems in public i don't think i could be able to do that because even with detachable cables i'd be like kind of worried about you know them getting damaged um, unless they were really sturdy now these are very sturdy and they're not that expensive so for the for the price, I can take these outside and not really care too much. I believe this is a very good outdoor IEM. Now let's move on to the sound. So when I first stuck these in my air, I had to wonder why did they name this EN700 bass? It didn't really make much sense to me because, you know, I'll get to that in a minute, but I did a little bit of Googling and I looked it up and I saw that basically they had the EN700 and people said to them, this would be nice with more bass. So they made a version with more bass and they called it the EN700 bass. That is the origin story of this IEM. Now what I've heard about SimGod as a company is that they value community feedback, which I think is a great thing uh, to, a, to an extent. It's a very good thing. Um, so they basically, like I said, people want more bass. They made a version with more bass. And I've heard rumors that they're making a version with detachable cables, but I have no evidence of that. So don't take my word for it. So the sound stage of the EN700 bass is quite good, quite wide. The imaging, it does not fall apart. If I'm listening to binaural recordings, the panning from left to right, if someone's moving like, let's say, a lit matchstick from left to right, 
it doesn't feel like it makes a sudden jump in pacing. It, it's quite even, is what I'm trying to say. I wouldn't say that the, the Sim God IEM is especially lacking in bass, but it's very rounded and smooth in presentation. Uh, quite a bit more than what I'm used to. So what I mean by this is that the bass is not especially textured or focused. Uh, it's just a presence that moves at a decent pace along with the genres, uh, both fast and slow. So what I mean by textured and focused is like, I'll give you an example. The HD 800, which is not, which doesn't have much bass volume in my opinion, has very precise bass, very textured bass, which is very good with uh, bass guitars. Whereas bass guitars on this uh, largely sound like they should. But if a certain effect is used in the bass, such as let's say distortion or a wah pedal or a wah pedal distortion mix that Cliff Burton from Metallica used to use, or if the attack is simply too fast, then the Sim God IEM kind of smooths out this characteristic a bit to make it fit into what it's able to do. Um, so if you're listening to, let's say, a very uh, mid-range forwarded or even slightly trebly bass, I know that sounds a bit strange, but it does happen with effects. Some people have a really sharp bass tone. You will not hear that sharpness so much with this IEM. It won't sound as precise or as textured as you know what you could really hear it on. Uh, bigger sound system and stuff, but like I said, this is purely for the price. This is very good bass representation. Uh, the sub bass extension is not that far reaching though, which is another thing that made me wonder. This made me wonder, like if this 700 bass is supposed to be the bassy version of the original, then I would not really have enjoyed the original so much because the sub bass extension on this it doesn't go that far. That is why I was confused when I first listened to them. Um, it's not a knock against the, you know, I'm not knocking them for titling it this way. I'm just saying that I was a little surprised because of how it sounds uh, compared to it having bass on the packaging itself. For casual listening, on-the-go listening, it's a good pairing for most genres of music for what it has. Uh, the mid-range reminds me quite a bit of the Mi Audio Pinnacle P1, which I've reviewed in the past. Uh, it's quite detailed. But it's a little recessed and thin in presentation, not especially forwarded or warm or anything like that. Uh, lower mid-range is a, is a region where I really don't like if there's a dip. Like the HP 150 headphone had a pronounced dip in the lower mid-range, and I didn't really like how it sounded. It made male vocals sound basically wrong to me. So despite this, I mean, it doesn't have a dip in that region so much, but even so, the crunch of distorted guitars or the bass notes of acoustic guitars lacks a certain quality that makes them sound very accurate or tonally like realistic is what I'm trying to say. Um, but this is a critique I really have to really, this is like me nitpicking right now because otherwise it just sounds really good, especially for the price. It sounds really good. But if I had to pick out anything to criticize, it would be that. Also, vocal harmonies usually ring out clearly and separation is really good. Like a really, really good separation between the channels and, um, uh, Especially even in hectic genres of music, the instruments are just well represented in the mix. But I have to admit that I do think that with some uh, certain recordings and you know production, depending on production and mastering and all that, and genre, of course, there are times where I feel like the instrumental is definitely emphasized more than the vocal uh, tracks. Now, this is something I also noticed with the, with the Pinnacle P1, and it does. It seems like the IMs are gelling better with the instrumental than the vocals themselves. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the vocals aren't audible. They don't, they don't get completely drowned out. They just, you can hear them take a slight backseat is what I'm trying to say. So the treble of the E and bass is what I would call comfortably extended. Um, I've used this term before to on headphones where I say the bass isn't shrill or it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have any peaks, it doesn't hurt you any or anything like that. But the Ian 700 bass being comfortably extended, that means, you know, no peaks, no uh, grating sibilance. But I do wonder uh, about this because I know that many high-end IEM fans and high-end IEMs have considerably more air than the Ian 700 bass, which I feel dips in this region considerably. So I feel like the climb between the mid-range and the treble, the lower treble, is quite linear to a certain point. But then it dips before coming back up again. Uh, do I feel like it's too rolled off or stifling? Personally, I don't. But I do know that this is a region 
the mid to upper treble uh, that hike, I do know that's a region where I'm a little sensitive. So if I don't hear any problems there, then I do feel that some people are definitely going to be thinking this thing is a little bit too rolled off for me. A little too uh, unadventurous, I don't know, it's a bit, a bit too laid back, is what I'm trying to say, a bit too recessed. The fans of hyper detail and air EIMs, I don't think this will give you the same resolution in that regard and the trouble. So to sum it up, I do really like this IEM. And I think that the SimGod EN700 bass is a very comfortable listen that has impressive traits for a relatively low price point. So it has a unique aesthetic that I found really admirable. It has solid construction, you know, even though it doesn't have a detachable cable, which the next, next version might, I'm not sure. Uh, but this is a very much a jack of all trades IEM in the 100 250 price point and it's kind of like if you if, if you're listening to it at home it's kind of like a set and forget kind of thing it's not like you're listening to it on your home setup it's more like a thing you just plug into your ears to listen to a song if you feel like it without wanting to set up to stuff too much or sit at your desk you want to lie on your bed and listen to something stuff like that uh, its identity seems to be a very friendly sound signature that i really do not think will offend the general listener and I really can't fault SimGod for this because it doesn't possess any deal-breaking problems at all. So this is a very safe choice for an all-rounder in its price point. That's what I have to say in the end. So that has been my first IEM review in quite a while. Hopefully more to come as I learn and gr grow in this uh, category of uh, sound stuff. Um, you can tell I'm not really experienced with this, so I apologize if this review didn't help you too much. So that has been my review. And I will see you next time. Cheers.